All right. I am not going to make you guys wait long for this one. Uh, the opposite of what I did with the Charlie Robinson interview. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio, ladies and gentlemen. I, of course, am the drizzle. And we are broadcasting not only at a strange time, but also on a strange day for us here at Liberty Radio. Most of you know Tuesdays are typically an off day broadcast wise. But that allows us to do some other things, some neat things, like what we are going to be doing this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my immense pleasure to welcome to the Liberty Radio virtual studio both of the hosts of the Unjected podcast, Scott and Shelby. Welcome to Liberty Radio. Aloha. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us on, dude. Good to see you. Absolutely. Well, stoked to be here. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for taking the time out of your schedule to uh, to join us and help us learn more uh, about this new platform called Unjected. So, for folks in the audience who might have been living under a rock for the last couple of years and aren't familiar with who you guys are and what Unjected is. Why don't you take a few minutes here at the beginning and uh, fill them in on that story and how your journey with this platform has been up to date? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're going to have to like rewind the clock back a little bit, of course, to the the crazy time that was 2021. And you'll remember our family and friends lining up to go get a vaccine and they would come home and they would take selfies with their vax card and it was just a time where everything felt like it was we were entering into a world that was very unknown and not so coincidentally at the same time as hundreds of thousands of millions of people getting vaccinated there was an indenuation of of women reporting having menstrual changes after being vaccinated being with a vaccinated partner or even working in close environments uh, where they may be exposed to coworkers or friends where um, that were freshly vaccinated. And after doing some research into the Pfizer studies that were originally leaked into this early spring of 21, uh, it was pages six through nine that I found very concerning, which talk about exposures to trial participants. And in this uh, clinical trials that were released, it talks about avoiding exposure through uh, exosomes. So essentially your breath, skin contact, saliva, sweat, semen, vaginal fluid, blood, breast milk. Essentially, every single fluid in the body could be uh, affected or uh, transferable with the the spike protein, the biological mRNA, uh, the weapon that was released on the population. And uh, that was kind of the, the final alarm bell for myself. And I, I realized that the unvaccinated needed a safe haven and a place to find safe partners and friends and community and um, and protect the human genome in the future of, of humanity. So long story short, that was... Um, the kind of the original uh, conception for Unjected. And now here we are a few years later, there's been lots of uh, uh, things we can get into, but we are now still on Unjected.com. <laughs> there you go. I'll tell you how I got involved with Unjected. So uh, I do the show Rebunk, Rebunk News, and I'd reached cool. out to Shelby uh, a couple times for her interview. And uh, after the second time I had her on, she was like, you know, we're – we really want to start a podcast, but we have no <laughs> idea where we're, we tried to make a podcast and we just have no idea what we're doing. And I was like, oh, my God, well, let me please help you. Like, I would do anything to be a part of this project. It's like because I was like a, you know, like a single guy, like I've been on injected since like the early days. And so I was like, oh, my God, if I could be involved anyway, that's so cool. And so, uh, yeah, so I helped uh, get the injected show off the ground, which now streams every Wednesday at eight uh eight eastern and um yeah the more we kind of started working together like uh you know i just they found a place within working behind the scenes at injected and it's just been uh it's been quite a journey it's been awesome mm -hmm. so, we're awesome. so grateful yeah, that's, <laughs> that that is fantastic and especially the that you guys are are branching out to do more than just one thing right so like it's not just a dating site it's the you have the podcast 
uh, angle to it as well. And as, as you have gone through the last few years uh, building this project out, have you found that it's, it's growing beyond the boundaries of what even you originally envisioned for it? Definitely. And, you know, I think it's a, a huge blessing and, and silver lining that in all of this psyops that was meant to destroy you know, our connection with people and, and finding each other that that's literally the opposite of what happened. Uh, and yeah, it's been incredible to see the the really authentic uh, relationships that have been formed through Unjected and the relationships and marriages and, uh, you know, babies on the way. And, you know, that was all very expected. But even just the the friendship groups that people have formed uh, all over the country, they kind of started creating their own little charters and little communities within their their states. And, uh, you know, they've helped each other get uh, religious exemptions. And, you know, there's this whole entire reverberation that's happened even to, you know, people matching um with each other for blood match donations and, you know, even sperm donors or breast milk donors. So, you know, it's kind of one thing to giggle about, but it's, um, it's a reality that there's such a need for unvaccinated services and resources um, all around the world that it's, it's definitely ventured into places I never would imagine, uh, you know, unvaxed surrogacy, uh, stem cells, anything you can imagine, there's, um, there's a, a need for it. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cause I mean, it, one of the things that was very apparent to me early on when they started rolling out the experimental gene therapy injections. Um, and of course here on Liberty radio, we prefer to call things by their proper names. So you'll never hear me or hardly ever hear me refer to it as uh, a COVID-19 vaccine or anything like that, because that's, that's marketing. Uh, and that's not <laughs> what we do here. Um, but it became clear to me very early on that essentially humanity was being sorted with these shots. We were being sorted into those who have and those who have not taken the shots. And it was, it was very apparent looking at the marketing campaign that everything was being geared towards those who have which of mm -hmm. course is leaving a, a very large void in the marketplace. We're supposed to believe that those of us who opted not to accept the experimental gene therapy into our lives, that we're somehow in the minority. Right. Is, is, is that the experience that you guys have had while you have been building Unjected, that the unvaccinated are the minority of the population? Mm. <laughs> well, I definitely wouldn't call them minority, but, you know, in a, in a technical term, maybe, but the camaraderie uh, that is superseded, uh, you know, it's not even in comparison. So, you know, have they made us try to feel like, you know, you're the only one that didn't get the vaccine, you know, you are ostracized, you are alone, you know, you are paranoid or you're you know, a Trumper or a Q, you know, you could imagine the names that you get called as being an anti-vaxxer. Uh, but it really showed that actually there was so many people in the woodworks and actually there's billions of unvaccinated people. You know, if you try to break down numbers, you might find 2.5 billion people refused the bioweapon. So that is actually, a, that's a lot of people. That's enough people to continue humanity. And, you know, I think people... Uh, of course, the ones being in the shadows, calling the shots, they wanted us to feel like, you know, there wasn't going to be any hope for you. And that's why you should go get vaccinated, whatever. And it couldn't be more than the opposite. You know, the the letters and the love and just all of the messages we've received throughout the years of, of people realizing, wow, you know, there are so many more people out there that that think the way I do. And um, I don't have I don't have to be alone in my my thought process. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like, uh, like at least in my surrounding circles, like I don't feel like, like I don't really hang out with vaccinated people. Like, I don't know, man. Like everybody I know is inje uninjected, I should say. Everyone I know is injected. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Man. Like I, as far in my little world, from my perspective, like everybody avoided the shot. It's amazing. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Get smart friends. That is well, yeah. that is interesting because my own sample size has been different. I would still yeah. claim that 
you know, the majority of people that I know opted not to take the shots. But the people who made the other choice still represent a meaningful minority in my mm-hmm. own particular sample size. I mean, for example, uh, everyone's probably getting sick of hearing me talk about it at this point, And maybe this is the best time for me to talk about it. But uh, my most recent ex, one of the reasons that we are no longer together, and trust me, there are many, many reasons, but one of them is the fact that she did choose to take the shots. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, she took at least two of them, if not more. So, I mean, it's, yeah. those people are out there. They exist. And, and the propaganda yeah. did work on them. So, yeah. you know, I, I guess that kind of makes me wonder with, with what you guys have uh, set up as, as far as up to this point with Unjected, how do you go about the process of vetting new members to make sure that they are truly Unjected? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. It's definitely the most asked question we get by far. You know, what about people who are lying? What do you do? And, you know, at at first it was not, it was actually a non-issue entirely because the vaxxed were so virtuous that it was like, (laughs) it was like, are you kidding me? We're never going to join unjected with those crazies, you know, no way. But then after those first boosters started rolling out, people kind of scratch their head and they're like, but wait, you told me I only had to take two. And why am I having to take more? Did I make a decision? Am I regretting my decision? And I actually, I call it vax affliction. Uh, They have some sort of affliction that's occurred. But uh, that was when we first kind of started really getting this question a lot. What about people who um, took the vax and now are wanting to be on injected or what do you say? And, you know, thankfully we've always you know, operated on transparency and honesty, you know, the unvaccinated population is, we're steadfast in our convictions and, you know, and everyone's really proud to be unvaccinated. And so it's always been, uh, you know, very uh, honest interactions. And, but, you know, we do have a verified process for people who are wanting that more Um, you know, security or safety or, you know, peace of mind. And we are waiting for science to catch up with us. And I mean, real science, not the trust the science TM, but uh, an actual testing solution that would differentiate unvaxxed versus vaxxed, or even just the actual shedding from the spike protein versus the bioweapon. There's so many different factors in uh, that go into it of determining and there's nothing that's completely foolproof yet so while we're waiting for that our verified injected members actually can attest to being unvaccinated so you actually meet with our injected nurse via zoom and you have to match a photo id so you know you are who you say you are and you sign an affidavit that states that you are unvaccinated and that lying about your vax status could be considered sexual misconduct to your partner or to injected. And uh, you sign that affidavit. And once you make that attestment, you can go into the injected site as a verified person, uh, which you'll get a badge on your profile and you do have more features and more access. But uh, this has just been our way of of mitigating that potential issue. Thankfully, it hasn't been an issue. But, you know, I always say um, to everybody to stay, stay diligent, you know, to who you talk to on the internet. It It's the internet, uh, you know, and you there's always some qualifying questions you can ask that I think it will always make it really easy for you. I kind of jokingly say, you know, tell them to send a picture of you uh, or themselves at a uh, protest, you know, or tell tell them what was your favorite uh, freedom doctor, you know, tell, tell me something about uh, these COVID times that only an unvaxxed person is going to be able to answer, or, you know, you're going to get the wide eyed stare of, um, oh, maybe that wasn't, (laughs) you know, maybe we are in a match. So it's going to be really easy to tell, um, you know, who's telling the truth and who's not. Just besides the fact that like the unvaxxed are just, just so much more vibrant and beautiful and intelligent that, I mean, of course you could just, (laughs) you could just look at someone and usually tell by now, but if you, if you need that extra security, go, go verified. (laughs) 
Yeah, and and it's important to designate which pro like which protests were you going to? Yeah. Right? you know what I mean. Like, were you throwing Molotov cocktails at police officers, or were you like <laughs> holding a "Don't tread on me" flag? Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Or, or have you spent the last two and a half years in a cage? Yeah, yeah, true that. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. What's well, it's good to know that there is that you guys uh, were thinking ahead when when you started building this out. Right. And and knew that you were going to have to have something in place for if this type of situation should present itself, because, you know, none of us here, uh, I would imagine, are uh, young and naive in in terms of the way the world works anymore. And we're all aware that all human beings, regardless of how uh, altruistic they they may appear to be, we all have the capability of lying. We all have the capability of trying to manipulate others in order to get what we want. Um, so kudos to you for you know, considering that as part of the process and making sure that you actually have something in place to be able to handle those situations. We yeah. hope that it never arises, but uh, yeah, we're, we're fortunate to, to see so many honest and beautiful people that come to Unjected. So it's it's just a blessing all around. <laughs> so yep. speaking about the, the growth of the actual platform itself, uh, what has your experience with that been? Was it, was it just like an explosion to start out and you never looked back from that? Was it a, a, you know, a, a slow ramp up? Like how did that go for you guys? Because I found that it, it's different with pretty much everybody in the independent media space. But once you reach a, a certain point, it's things just kind of start to go on their own. Yeah, well, actually, it's funny because that's what got us into trouble in the censorship world was kind of how quickly we grew, especially at the beginning. When uh, we first launched in 21, uh, the spring of 21, we uh, came out as an app, actually, for Apple Store and Google Play Store. And we were downloaded, geez, I want to say over 40,000 times the first month alone. And uh, a reporter from Bloomberg had reached out and said, wow, Apple, why do you let all of these murderous anti-vaxxers have, have an app on the App Store? Don't you think you are spreading the pandemic and you are, you know, you're being harmful to society? And Apple was very shocked to learn at uh learn at us. And we were deleted that day. It was like, do not pass go. You are out of here. So we were banned from the app store for misinformation regarding the pandemic. And that was when Google uh, kind of caught wind that we existed. And then they started sending very creepy messages. They they called it deceptive behavior. And they would go through people's profiles and um, anything that they've posted in the site, or excuse me, the app, They'd circle it in red and then they'd send it back and they'd say, you need to delete this harmful content or you need to delete the user who's posting it. And no, this is our first amendment. This is our freedom of speech. We are allowed to talk about whatever we want to talk about. And, uh, you know, we kind of got into this this uh, private entity conversation with Google and Apple. Well, Well, we can do whatever we want. So, you know, you guys are out of here. And we kind of fired ourselves from from the app stores. We didn't want to be associated with them at the time because there was too much censorship. And that's when we went to uh, Unjected.com was because of that uh, massive growth that got us uh, spotted by the bad guys. But since then, yes, we've we've continued to to grow. We have over a hundred thousand members in ninety different countries. Um, but we've had definitely different versions and renditions of the site. So we've had to. Um, also do like more onboarding again we've had like all of the trans we couldn't transfer any profiles from the app to the new website so that was a you know a big leap over and then in some of these versions of uh growing you know we've had to also uh re-onboard our members so you know it's been interesting to watch how the censorship game has um affected us in that way or whether it was like social media you know we've lost nine pages uh to injected that way so uh they've always been been poking at us but it's a steady steady incline we're we're always growing and uh and finding more unvaxxed people around the world every day (laughs) well and i imagine that that's that's likely to continue 
as well. Because, yeah. you know, just as we highlighted earlier, there's literally nobody. Uh, as, as far as uh, uh, major corporations are concerned, there is nobody catering to the unvaccinated at this point. Still, you know, mm-hmm. the, they'll work some back deals with you if that's what they have to do. But uh, good Lord, no, it, it's not going to be under the spotlight. You, you are not allowed uh, to show the world that you still exist at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. Or at least, again, that's that's been my experience. Uh, It's funny that you say that uh, you were one of the uh, things that you were flagged for uh, by the algorithms was deceptive behavior, because that happened to Liberty Radio literally last week with TikTok. We started a TikTok Mm -hmm. account for the first time last week. We got two videos posted and then nothing else. They won't let us post anything else. And the reason... Yeah. The reason I was given was because uh, we they had determined that uh, our hardware that we were using to upload the videos had been modified and that our account Uh was flagged for deceptive behavior. And Uh so I guess they were talking about the laptop that uh, I personally purchased in Mexico and then brought to the United States. Right. That's that's how I have modified the hardware. I've taken it out of the region that it was originally intended for. That's the only wow, thing I can figure. <gasps> that, that is, is so crazy. Weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's any excuse that they come up with, right? They're never going to come at you directly and, and, and give you a legitimate excuse or say that we're censoring you over this or that. You know, I think, I think a lot of it, like the censorship they came down with the, with the app, from my understanding, it was like, it's so hypocritical because it's like, they say, oh, we found some harmful content. Or what, what was it exactly, Shelby, that you said? It was- well, so we had a social, social feed. Yeah, the social feed. It's like time- a Facebook feed, like a Facebook yeah. feed, kind of, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, you could go post links or photos or videos. You could go, you know, it was actually the only fact checker free place at the time because we weren't fact checking anything. Go, come on in, say whatever your heart desires, as long as it's not just completely out of control. So <laughs> we we had all of this uh this adult conversation happening on the social feeds. And what happened is the app testers, if you, if you made any sort of technical adjustment to the app, whether, even if it was just a typo that you needed to adjust, you have to go through an app review, a testing process every time. So just like how your iPhone says version 14.1.7 or whatever, those are all different versions that have been tested by app testers and then published onto the store. So when we would go through these review processes to make enhancements, these people with their own biases, most likely very vaccinated, would go through to review the app and they would be very much offended by the content that was there. You know, oh, you're going to get hooked to a 5G tower or you're infertile or this or that. You know, they were seeing just everything you can imagine. And so the app testers were the ones that were originally collecting the information, doing the bidding for Apple. So they would circle all this stuff. And then um, that's, that is part of the reason, but then I had the real like dagger that they said that was my fault was that I told people that the app testers were on us. I posted my own post and I said, we are being watched. You know, I don't want to delete your stuff. Because I don't think that's fair, but maybe stop saying vaccine and 5G and stuff. Just I said, keep it chill with some code words. And that was the final straw. They circled my post and they said, oh, as God. a as a moderator, you are not allowed to moderate in this way. You just have to delete the content. You are not allowed to talk about it oh. or warn so, so people. So they were telling you how to moderate your own product. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's so crazy. But, you know, a lot of that is like, you know, a lot of this information that allegedly was making them so upset, you know, where else I can find an abundance of that information is like Google Chrome, right? So yeah. I can like pull up Google Chrome and I can find any sort of, a, I could commit all kinds of crimes on Google Chrome. I can pull up almost any heinous thing you could possibly imagine. I can uh, discover all the same uh, misinformation that they were accusing us of right there on Google Chrome, like right in their app store. That's so, hysterical. Yeah. Oh, you know where else yeah. you can find all of that stuff? Yeah. Twitter. Where's that? Yeah. Twitter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, exactly. It, I, I just made uh, Elon's naughty list by saying that. But yeah, it's all, it's all over Twitter. 
and yet yeah exactly they're still yeah, getting I advertising I mean, Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like I don't know if a lot of people know this, but like, I'm like, oh, Twitter has like legitimate like hardcore pornography like all over it, dude. Like, I, oh, yeah. I, I actually stumbled across some recently. I'm like, dude, I'm not. I'm really like live, trying to live my life in such a way where I'm not viewing that anymore. You know what I mean, <laughs> dude? No, I'm being were, dead serious, dude. I'm dead serious. It's if been you a long were watching time. Just got, like, Wisdom last night, yeah. you heard Teal yeah. say that Twitter is her go-to app for pornography. It's not. Porn oh, really? Enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What? Yeah. Who's yeah. This? Uh, Teal, so, one of the hosts so, of Blunt Force, Blunt Force Wisdom. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing about our society is that, you know, things like that, pornography, like that's encouraged. Like that's great. Like that's if you're if that's if that's the business you're in, you're going to be promoted by the beast 100 yeah. percent. You know what I mean? But it's like if you're trying to like save lives and and uh, create community and actually build alternative uh, parallel systems to rival the big guys like that's when they come after you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But all right, no so, doing uh, good things. No doing good things. Oh yeah, exactly. No good deed goes unpunished, especially <laughs> on the internet. Uh, no. I learned that very, very early on. So yep. you guys are no strangers to controversy, obviously. Nah. So did it come as a shock to you a few short weeks ago when Amazing Polly started coming out with her research? <laughs> Uh, regarding the wellness company like was that unexpected or or did you did you kind of have a feeling that sooner or later you were going to become a target again well there's always there's always some new thing that they come after us about but yeah the wellness company thing like i hadn't heard any of that stuff like i mean when she when she started running her mouth like i was like oh okay interesting and we kind of stayed out of it until she mentioned the word injected and then we're like okay (laughs) Now it's our fight. Yeah. So, <laughs> but. I, you know, so I've been calling her by her real name, which is not Polly. Her name is Sherry Nelson. So I don't know why she has this alter ego that she's given herself to be more powerful. But whatever the reason is, um, I think that it seems like a, like a large waste of time that she would be trying to get the freedom community to fight amongst ourselves uh, instead of actually fighting the evil guys, which is which is the people that are still, you know, big pharma. Uh, uh, the people all the who bad are trying guys to are, kill us. Right. All of the bad guys are still doing their shit. And we're going to fight amongst ourselves about supplement companies and things. And I'm like, you know, I, uh, I, I think that the wellness company did a great job at answering a lot of the questions that Polly had. Um, Foster Colson has, has publicly answered all of these things. And, um, you know, I think there's there's lots of snakes in the grass. And whatever her reason for being to attack us, I, I don't know what she's gaining out of it. It seems like seems like a waste of energetics. And so, you know, we've we've gotten into it just very slightly since she mentioned injected, but we've re- we've been having very much a fun time with it. Really, if yeah, anything. we've been having a lot of fun. Um, we've been having a lot you know, of fun with it. The hate comments or like the the troll the trolls that follow her that come after us. We we really do just kind of giggle at it, um, you know, because at the end of the day, we know where we stand um, in authenticity and truth, and you know, we're here to help fight the NWO. And if you're not going to come along for that ride, then kind of. <laughs> kind of shut up then if you're not gonna if you're not gonna join the fight then just get out of it uh, you know keep being a keyboard warrior somewhere else yeah and, and i think it's important she- to stress that like injected is injected injected is owned by injected shelby's the ceo like we run our operation we partnered with them for development stuff uh, uh but like i get paid by injected you know what i mean like it's like it's we're uh our yeah, own we're, yeah entity. we're our own thing you know what I mean? <laughs> um and, and, you know, personally, I can address some of the claims. Like, I mean, if you have any specific questions, I'm, I'm open to talk about any of that stuff, but like, you know, some other stuff like that, I, that, that, that really stood out to me and some of the stuff he was saying is um, like the gatekeeping aspect. Like I can understand, um, like I have issues with some of those, like, like in her, you know, Polly's chart, right. Her little chart of like influencers and stuff like that. Like I personally have issues with a lot of those people on there because I feel like there is, you know, the gatekeeping aspect. I also feel that. Um, a lot of them are a bunch of Johnny come lately's that now it's safe to talk about COVID. It's like, you can profit in the beginning by staying silent. And then you can profit again by being the hero 
four years later, now that it's safe to come out of the woods when all of us were in the trenches when it mattered, you know what I mean? So I have a lot of ill will towards a lot of that stuff. And it's like, you know, it's like, bro, shut the fuck up. Like half of you, like a small segment, well, I shouldn't say half. Some of you were like pro vaccine back in the day. Like what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like all that shit. So yeah, I don't have any patience for any of that, but I'll give you like a personal example. Like, so with like vigilant news, for example, the foster and them, they just bought vigilant news and there's, there's like things about gatekeeping there. Well, I'll tell you, I wrote an article that we published on the objected Substack. I sent it to the vigilant Fox guy and he published it. I'm a nobody dude. Like I was able to get on vigilant news. You know what I mean? So it's like, Hmm, I thought that was interesting. But, uh, uh, and the other thing I think is really funny too, is like, okay, so, uh, it's really funny how she seems to be perplexed about what affiliate marketing is. Like, like if, if I, if I have an affiliate program, I'm going to want to get that in front of like uh, as many high level people as I possibly can. I mean, that's oh, yeah. just good business, just good business strategy. And so, you know, I think that that's, that's kind of a, uh, like not even an argument really, you know what I mean? And it's like, um, so I mean, hell, I want, I want injected. I want all those guys to be injected affiliates, all the same ones that she's blasting. I'm like, dude, Brett Weinstein, will you please be an injected affiliate? That would kick <laughs> ass, dude. She Come posted on. the graph today. Polly posted uh -huh. a new one and she put oh. under there. Is uh, it bigger? Did she put us on there? Yeah. Are we on there? <laughs> Put us on there finally. Yes. Oh, nice. I was like, finally. Yeah. Oh, Hell yeah. We're finally dude. on the graph. Dude, All what publicity a dumb is good dude. publicity, guys. Exactly. I, but what a dumb bitch, dude. Like, if she had any idea like who Shelby and I like actually were, which by the way, we wanted to we invited kind of her on our show. Mercilessly. Um, this, was, this was in February before February. shit really yeah. like like before the internet really blew up. And we said, you know. Come join us on the podcast. Talk yeah. about all of your grievances. Let's chat about yeah. it like adults and let's figure out how we go forward. She ignored it and instead sent all of her little minions after us yeah. to say that we were controlled. Illuminati, Illum like, Illuminati. Oh my God. We, well, we did it. We did a couple episodes on the uh, an episode a couple of weeks ago on the injected show, which was really funny. It was called Losing Faith in the Truth Movement. And kind of the 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 premise of that was like a lot of her followers were like commenting on like they found like some numerological things like in like our logo and stuff on the show and stuff and they were like oh yeah they're a bunch of like cabal cabalist illuminati like all this stuff i'm like bro dude like come on like you, you you're that, like you're a truther and your discernment leads you to that you a you probably have no idea who i am you have no idea like what i do like you i, I mean i mean if, if that's the conclusion you made based off of a screenshot of a logo of a tv show and you're making all these assumptions you're not a truther dude like mm -hmm. i'm losing faith in the truth movement based off of these kind of claims that these people are making and so well isn't I just isn't that, that the whole point of controlled opposition in the first place is to yeah. sow division and create doubt yeah. Right. Yeah. That's sure. what an agent Absolutely. provocateur is supposed to do. Yeah. And her name lately, I'm sorry. Is she just giving it away? It's almost yeah. like she's trolling us on purpose now. Deep yeah. state agent gone rogue. I'm like, you yeah, probably yeah. are, though. I'm like, you're kind of acting yeah. exactly like that. Well, I like yeah. I like the whole uh, Polly St. George <laughs> angle. I, I guess that's <laughs> not supposed to tie into the order of St. George at all. Because she's not no. the one being, you know, Illuminati and, and secret society and all of that. Yeah, no, exactly. Of course not. I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, exactly. I could just Illuminati. be talking out my ass right there. You dude, know. Illuminati Scotty. I like that. You put that in the chat. There you go. Illuminati That's Scotty hysterical. right here, dude. I love yeah. that. <laughs> Illuma Scotty. I should make that in a new, I should start go. a new show. Illuma there you Scotty. Go. There you go. Yeah, feel free to <laughs> use that, man. Make a bunch love, of money I love off that. of that. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Now, uh, so I will say too, like on a personal level, like, um, so we have this signal chat that we use for like injected related business, which consists of like Foster Colson and Peter, uh, I always forget how to pronounce his name. Gilluli. Galuli, yeah, who's the CEO of the the wellness company, and it's it's fun. We literally just hang out and like talk shit about libtards and vaxies all day, like share memes. Like it's it's like it's like these people like I think they're really all about it from what I can gather. And then they 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 believe in the injected mission, and that was like how our partnership came to be with them in the first place. Was we were going through a tough time, and maybe Shelby, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, but we had like some developer issues, and they stepped up and said, "Hey, we believe in the mission, and we want to help you guys out." You know, how yeah. can we help? And it was like this perfect divine timing because we were, you know, that was like, I I'd just kind of come on board with like the last six months or so. And uh, we were like gangbusters, like really starting to, the whole reason why I was brought on is because like there was 
first began to be like some revenue like like mm -hmm. object was finally able to generate some revenue and it got to the point where i was offered a position based on the fact that hey we have a little bit of money and we we could use some help right and so that was how that whole process came to be and we were so excited everything was happening and then boom we had this developer issue and we were back at zero square one and uh so literally that like that week that's when uh our, the stars line we came into contact with the wellness company and they offered to help us out but i don't know if shelby if you had any other thoughts on that but that no that was pretty much on yeah. point but you know it's it's definitely um yeah, it's been it's been a journey uh, for Unjected. And so when we partnered with the wellness company, it was because we felt in our hearts that, you know, they are people just like you and I. They are husbands, they're wives, brothers, sisters, they have children. They are regular people who are out trying to make a difference. And uh, I think, you know, just like you mentioned with the controlled opposition, you know, it's just like discrediting people for maybe their own personal jealousy or ego or pride or whatever the reasons might be. Um, that's, or even for money, you know, money. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I've, I've been treated with nothing but respect. Um, and so has injected and, you know, we really do share a, a mutual vision of building parallel systems that are, that are away from the crumbling ones that we have. And I, I think that's where Polly is confused is like, you know, she sees that, um, you know, there were the wellness company is building a whole infrastructure that does help, you know, it is medical based and, you know, health based. And, uh, but why don't we need that? You know, she's acting like just because big, you know, big heart, uh, big harma did it in this way. And so the good people can't do it in their way either. It's like, I don't really know what, it, what she's, what she's angry about. Why are you angry about having a parallel system for people like you and me and us? And like, you know, the good guys have to fight back with the same, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember us ranting at this point. But well, yeah. I mean, it, like, it, usually when you fight fire with fire, uh, you just end up burning everything down. And, yeah. and I think that's oftentimes where most people's discernment ends. They mm -hmm. don't understand because they only see fire as a weapon, right? Mm -hmm. They don't understand that it depends on how you harness it and employ the technology. It can be a weapon or it can be a tool. It's all in how you handle it. Right. Yeah. And I also want to invite everybody to go check out our Twitter account after yesterday because we had a nice little spattering with her last night. It was very fun. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, she, she loved Twitter so, arguments. Yeah, exactly. It was a great little <laughs> Twitter argument. And, and I like the basis of it is like, OK, now that we have your attention, now we're formally inviting you on the show to talk about this. And she yeah. would not address it. She oh, it ended up with her saying, beg, beg, beg for me. it, like beg, beg me, me to come, come on your on. show. And we're like, lady. We're trying to help, I'm trying to help you out here because if you kind of like look at objectively at like what just happened, like you're obviously hiding from like you're 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 showing yourself to be kind of a coward right now, right? I mean, so right. it was it was fun. So it was just like, come on, lady, what are you doing? Well, so. and my issue with it is like it's it's all well and good to do your research to to publish your findings and and even speak about sure. you know 100%. what you think those uh results might possibly indicate that's fine exactly. that's that's what we're all here to do right is figure out exactly what the truth is and in order to do that we have to have a free exchange of ideas yeah but Absolutely. the problem is amazing polly doesn't grant interviews uh, yeah. So it, exactly. basically you're, you're just, you know, firing your bullets in any direction that you want to without really having to suffer any consequence for it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's Absolutely. where I have a problem. If you're not willing to go on and, and actually have the conversation mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of the truth, because in, in any dispute, it's never one side that is 100% right. Exactly. You know, the truth always lies somewhere in the middle. And if we can't do the work of finding out where that objective truth is, then, you know, the entire argument is fallacious as far as I'm concerned. 
Exactly. Well, and you know what? She has a freedom of speech and I'm very glad that she has a voice and a platform that she can say whatever she wants. I think that's fantastic. And I would never advocate in any way for her to not be able to say all the things that she wants at, at any given time under any circumstances about anybody she wants. But that also means that we have the right and the ability to make uh uh, parody injected profiles for her if we want to, right? <laughs> I just sent you a couple of screenshots on Telegram if you feel so inclined. I don't know. So there you go. It was the strangest thing. I was I was scrolling through my DMs and I, I noticed a message from this account. And I thought, wow, yeah. Sherry, you weren't a fan. Yeah, exactly. Also, I What's thought going she on, was married, maybe? but... Yeah. Uh, well, oh, well if you, if you, you'll if you, see you're yeah, gonna you're gonna if you find see out. in her profile she's looking for she she said she's like i've got a leash for you too and i'm gonna make you beg make you beg for it yeah oh wow that sounds like a promise <laughs> she likes those yeah. commands yeah, yeah. She, she's very uh she's kind of spicy I, I, guess, guess. I, I might be able to get down with that i don't know <laughs> yeah uh, so if you guys see amazing polly on on injected you should hit her up you know there you yeah. go there you go and then send a <laughs> screenshot of what you said to her Twitter account for us. Oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> well, it, it definitely sounds like you guys are having a lot of fun with it. And I think that is that is the direction that you need to go. Because otherwise, you know, uh, that kind of stuff will drive you nuts. And Shelby, yeah. I know uh, your time is a little bit tight today. So I want to make sure that we respect that and, and don't linger on this subject too long. No worries. Um, <laughs> So I want to switch gears right now because I know you're you're still out in Hawaii, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And we're not quite to the one year anniversary of the Lahaina fires yet, uh, but yeah. we are rapidly approaching them, uh, or it, as it were. Uh, what is the latest news that you can share with us on what is going on in Lahaina? I wish it was positive news, uh, but, you know, I feel 100 percent confident that Lahaina was destroyed by a do weapon, um, that this was a absolute threat um, from our own country, just a domestic terrorist attack, whatever you want to call it. This was a land grab through disaster capitalism. Um, essentially, all of Lahaina has been completely in rubble until just about a month ago when they finally started doing some of the cleanup process. And they are working on residential homes first, which is which is good to see. Uh, but, you know, the conversation to be had about what is going to happen to Front Street and all of the oceanfront properties, uh, that has not really come, come up yet, which is going to be, uh, I think, shocking for a lot of people. You know, the state is going to eminent domain everything that was on the water line. And the reason for that being is that no, it is no longer up to code. You can no longer build on the ocean. You can't put pipes next to the ocean, electricity, et cetera. So that's going to be the state's way of taking all of that oceanfront property, which mind you is some of the most spectacular property in all of the world. And, and some of the most uh, expensive. And some of the most expensive. And, you know, I've heard about 25% of the Lahaina residents have permanently moved off island. Uh, there is an extreme housing crisis that the island is facing. Uh, FEMA pays up to $11,000 a month for four bedroom houses. So there's just been this, you know, massive uh, crisis of people kicking out uh, residents to house fire victims or even kicking out fire victims to house a different fire victim so they can make more money on it. Uh, it, you know, I could go on for days, but it's terrible what's going on here. Uh, they, they're they dumping the toxic materials right in the middle of the island. They don't have any regard. They actually imminent domained 20 acres to turn into a dump, uh, which is going oh, to yeah. literally poison everything. Uh, it was going to cost $5 billion to ship it off island, uh, but Mr. Daddy government couldn't help us with any of that. So they said, well, don't worry about it. We'll just leave it leave it on the island. Uh, we'll worry about it at another time. Um, <laughs> there's tiny houses that have been bought that have not been set up due to permit issues, uh, red tape. The body count is 100% inaccurate. They, uh, to this day, they are only saying that only one tourist perished, one child, and only one person in the water. The the count is, a, I think, 100 and 
104 right now. That That's is a it. blatant, blatant What about lie. the thousands of missing children? Oh, I don't know what happened because everybody got MK Ultra over here. They act like we're not allowed to talk about missing children. Hey, what happened to the missing children? You can't say that. That's a conspiracy theory. It is the most bizarre thing I've ever, ever witnessed in my life. There are hundreds, if not a thousand people that are dead and missing. Um, that I do believe fully. People need to keep their eyes on on Maui and Lahaina and what is happening here. This is a massive cover up. And I believe that these people that perish that are not being counted for were most likely undocumented uh, people from all over the world. There was a uh, a massive population uh, from people from you know the Philippines, from Asia, all over the world. Uh, and, yeah, and I think you know, I think that's important to stress because I, I hadn't even considered that when you were breaking that down for me. But it's because if you think about it, like uh, Lahaina, Maui, it's a huge tourist place, lots of hotels, yeah. lots of resorts. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the it's the same thing as on the mainland where it's like a lot of that work, the hospitality work, like the housekeeping yep. and stuff is done by like undocumented people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Believe it or not, even though they're in the middle of the ocean, you know, it's not like they can just cross a border to get there. But at the same time, mm -hmm. that, that industry still exists much in the same way it does on the mainland. And so these people are off the radar and and not uh on any sort of like census or anything like that where they could be accounted for and and by and large the families aren't going to come forward and be like oh hey you know my so-and-so is missing so it's like that's a large segment of the population that there's just no way to know and it's like it's been like just vanished so well and, very, and what about crazy. the the um uh, i guess you would call them like the the elders that had the property there in Lahaina for generations that have now been displaced. And I guess some of them probably even got murdered in the process, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, yeah. what's, what's happening to those people? You know, it's, it, they've, uh, they've almost just like let it sit so long that it's become survival of the fittest because everybody, you know, was taken off their land and then they were given $700 from the federal government and no help, no, literally nothing. So it's kind of just been like, who can stick around and and wait out to till you get back on the land? You know, it, there's still a a 12 mile perimeter fence all the way around Lahaina. National Guard is still stationed. You know, you still have to get permission to come in. Uh, and this has been this is still, you know, how many months into this? Uh, you know, you are it's a restricted area. So. You know, for as far as these um, native Hawaiians who have had property, I think a lot of them are just trying to figure out how to survive. And that's that's part of the land grab as well. It's like, you know, there's not a whole lot of time to think about uh, what's going on with your property when you you know need to, to eat and find shelter and just basic necessities to live. Um, but, you know, are they going out of their way to make it more difficult for them? Yes. And one example uh, I know a, a native Hawaiian born and raised full ancestry lines that he can count back for as far as you can imagine. When his birth certificate was uh, lost in the fire, he went to go get a new copy of it. And of course, nothing is um, original copies anymore. They're only digital copies. And so when he got his digital copy, his ethnicity came back no longer said Hawaiian on his birth certificate. It said Asian mix. And so now, and this has not just happened to this one man, this is happening to a lot of people where their birth certificates no longer have their real ethnicity on them. So what does this mean? Do they have the right to native Hawaiian ancestral lands if they technically aren't Hawaiian on their birth certificate? Right. Are they going to have to submit to some sort of genetic testing to prove this i mean you can really dive deep but what is the what's the purpose of that is that also to aid in in the land grab that they you know ancestrally don't have to abide by by these rules if they can can steal that from them as well it's um it's really pretty crazy i've heard that some people are um starting to come back onto the cleared lots that are just gravel uh, and they're setting up like tents and shed kind of things uh, within their property. But I, I don't know what that means for them. You know, no permits have been issued for any rebuilds yet. So these people are kind of just um, waiting, waiting it out right yeah. now. 
Yeah. And I, I had the chance to go out there in October, 23, 23 last year, just a few months ago. And like, just like Shelby took me around and like, we all like as a crew, like her crew out there, like we all went and toured around and I saw stuff that were very, very anomalous that, that just doesn't like I'm from Oregon, right? I've, I've been through a lot of the Oregon wildfires and stuff like that. And I've seen towns, we've toured towns where it's like, I know fire behaves in very strange ways. Like you'll see entire neighborhoods wiped out, but like one house right in the middle, just untouched. It's really weird. And so I know that fire behaves weird. You know what I mean? Of course we could attribute all that to like, you know, the, the, the little smart meters and all that shit. But I, and I still know that fire does weird things, but there's like the, probably the thing that stood out the most to me was like this big parking lot with like, you know, 50 yards and all sides of just blacktop and pavement. And then there was all these boats that had just melted, like melted. all these boats that just melted. And it's like, there's no way that the fire was even anywhere near where those things were. Right. And then, and, and of course, like one of the arguments is that like the pavement would start melting before like these, like the, the melting temperature, like the disfigurement that you'd see in like the pavement would be, before, you know what I mean? Like there's just anomalous things. It's like that doesn't compute like how could that even possibly happen you know and so it's just like it's just so weird man the whole people thing people were flash frozen they were flash frozen yep. the stories that i hear uh which are which have been covered up because these people had to sign ndas and other non-disclosures and they're scared for their lives because they think that they're going to get in trouble for talking about what happened but it was like pompeii scenes okay yep. where people are trying to get children out of car seats but they're frozen dead flash frozen they're stuck in their cars no doors open yeah to explain it make it yes. make sense that's yes. why they it's why they fenced off lahaina and they said nobody's coming in here because you're not going to come witness what we yep. did in here animals on all fours frozen dead standing and stand standing positions uh, yeah, all wow. over the place, thousands of them, people, all of it. None of it makes yeah, that sense. Doesn't, no that doesn't sound like a, a rapidly no. moving wildfire to me. No. That sounds like something no. that you don't have the time to escape from. Yes. Yeah. It was and, and in I, an instant. And, and of course, like when it comes to that, like there, there are like aspects you can look on it on its face. You can see that this was the government negligence, like in a criminal way, like, like they turned off the water. They didn't do the sirens. Right. Uh, the fact that they were blocking the exits to Lahaina, like Shelby's mom, the only reason why she survived was because she disobeyed the police authority and went around the blockades in a way that she wasn't supposed to. Otherwise she would have been in that line of cars that were trapped and, 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 you know, God forbid anything that could have happened because of that you know what i mean and so it's yeah. like the rule is you guys for all you liberty radio listeners out there i don't know you're all on the same page it's like when you comply you die yeah. do not comply no matter what everything that they say and everything they do is leading you right off a cliff well yeah there was a meme that was going around uh, i think not even a week after the the alleged fires took place and it it was just a picture of some of the devastation. I think it was it was just like a random picture from uh, a roadway. And the caption was the only ones who survived were the ones who disobeyed. Yep. Yep. And like if that does exactly. not chill you right to your bone, then I'm sorry, you you might want to you might want to go to the doctor's office and and make sure that you're still alive. Get your pulse yeah. checked, you know? Yep. Whether we're talking the injection or or some sort of mm -hmm. like, you know, fire evacuation thing, like do not comply. Yeah. Do not comply. So we've got uh, Lone Star Viz in the Rumble chat indicating that the insurance companies are even denying the claims for the people whose houses burnt to the ground. Is that accurate? That that was accurate. It um it didn't have, you know it, thankfully it's simmered out a little bit since then and some people some have received checks but a lot of people like once I mentioned too close to the ocean they were getting back messages with uh, from their insurance company saying well your house wasn't actually up to code so that's why you're not able to wow. uh, get your insurance payout but yet these people were paying their premiums paying for this said insurance. Yeah. 20, 30 years, but now you're going to tell me my house isn't up to code. I mean, you know, yeah. we know how yeah, that I, goes. Yeah. That's <laughs> such a scammy industry. Like, like I, if you do have like homeowner's insurance, like really check up on that. Cause I've done, I did work for a lady with my little handyman business who lives literally on a, on a river, like on the bank of a river, the river flooded, her house got flooded or no, this wasn't her. This is her neighbor neighbor's house got flooded and uh the the insurance got denied because she didn't have the right type of like riverfront flood insurance and she's like 
then what the fuck did you sell me? Do you know I live on a river? Like, why would you not give me the coverage that I need? Right. And so now that house is up on stilts. It's hilarious. They rebuilt it. And it's like up on these big old stilts. So. Well, I can tell oh, you wow. that the insurance yeah. companies do that on purpose. Yes, of and course they do on a person. I know so that be to vigilant. be a fact so because crazy. I used to work for those bastards. Uh, ah, yeah. Huh. yeah so it's know. crazy, dude. So evil. So. Evil. Or they're giving you know like only a percentage of what your house was actually worth, you know. So maybe sure. somebody's house was uh, a million and a half. Uh, you know, insurance gave them seven hundred thousand. Right. So it's like good good luck rebuilding, you know, right. especially and here in Hawaii. And they'll typically use some some sort of bullshit excuse. Well, you know, the market is actually overvalued right now. This yeah. is even though the assessed value is this, this is what the true value of the property mm-hmm. is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do exactly. that crap all the time. Yeah. Hey Shelby, did you need to dip out? I know you had another. I probably do. Hour. I probably okay. gotta jump okay. you guys. Okay. <laughs> but I've been having so much fun. This has been a great, a great time hanging out with you well, guys. Really yeah. quick before you go, let everybody know all the places where they can interact with your work. For sure. So uh, of course you can find me on injected.com. Send me a message. I'm at founder and anybody listening can use the code Liberty today for 25% off uh, to go build your injected profile. So go check it out. Go find the love of your life or friends. And uh, you can find me on Instagram at injected official Twitter at Unjected. And then, of course, uh, find me, Scott, and our amazing co host, uh, Zach from the Unfit Statesman, every Wednesday on the Unjected show at 8 Eastern, uh, everywhere you stream except YouTube because they hate us. So go find us on Rumble. Mm-hmm. And yeah. <laughs> amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today on Liberty Radio, Shelby. We really, thank really you. appreciate all of the information uh, that you were able to provide us with today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being a warrior of the truth. Absolutely. Uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. I can stick around if it, for a minute if you want. Do you yeah, man. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Right, I'll cool. just, right. I'll ditch out of here. All right. Good luck, Shelby. Hi, Peace. guys. Aloha. She's, she's going to go hang out with pasta right now. So there you oh, go. Oh, nice. Yeah. Big pasta. Yeah. So. Nice. Tell him Yona said hi. Oh, Yona always says hi. Yona's the man. Well, yeah. That's because Yona's always high. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's <laughs> yeah, the high exactly. Yona. You know. uh, exactly. 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 So, right on. The, I know. Yeah, that's you, funny. I know you have been working uh, on some music, Scott. Um, are you ready yes. to, to talk about no. that? No, oh, no, okay. that's a top secret project. I was, yeah. I was like, I was, uh, I, it's a legend. Well, I haven't gotten legend. the memos, so I didn't know like yeah, what I know, level I know. it was, you know. I, no, no, no. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm working on some music, but I'm very, very excited about it. Um, right now I'm at the phase where, okay, so I'll tell you this. I had a really funny experience where, you know, I've got some songs, you know, and, uh, I've been using my little digital audio workstation and I'm getting them all plugged in and I'm just kind of like trying to in my headphones, trying to get them to like sound good. Right. I'm like, okay, there you go. That sounds good. I don't have the best headphones. I talked to a, I'm lucky. I live in Nashville. Cause I have some like, like pretty high end music producer buddies here. Like one of the guys that lives down the road who hosts a lot of these freedom meetups. He was just telling me yesterday I was over there. He was telling me about how he used to, uh, like he, he does like events for like Stevie Van Zant, Right. And he, uh, the guy from Bruce Springsteen, mm-hmm. guitarist from Bruce Springsteen, who played yeah, Silvio Steve. on the Sopranos and yeah. everything, right? And so he said that he got to – they were doing an event up in New York, and so all, all the Sopranos guys were coming and hanging out, and he got to, like, hang out with all those guys. And it was, like, right around the time James Gandolfini died. And so, you know, like, he he became, like – really close with like a lot of the uh like a lot of the sopranos guys to that anyway so he's like he's like in the industry for reals you know what i mean and so he was telling me about these sets of headphones that i needed so i just ordered us like a studio headphones to really get like what the mix is supposed to sound like you know what i mean because these are just like little 30 40 dollar podcaster headphones and so anyway i'm excited about that but anyway so I, i'm using my podcaster headphones trying to get the mix to sound right and i'm like okay yeah there you go that sounds not too bad. And so then I go in, I go outside and I, I'm like, I, I think, I think I got the song like right where I want it. So I throw it in the, in, in the, in the truck and I listen and, and it's like, the it sounds so horrible. It sounds so horrible. I couldn't, I was just like, my, my stomach hurt. I was like, Oh, this is impossible. And so 
I was like ready to give up. I was so demoralized and so depressed. I'm like, I'm no good at this. I'll never be anything. I just can't do it at all. Right. And so I went to YouTube and I found this, uh, I, I typed in just basically like uh song mix sounds horrible in the car. And I found this video and this, this guy was like, well, 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 welcome. Welcome here. If you have arrived here, then that means you have just been initiated into the world of audio mixing where uh -huh. you have taken your song that you work so hard on, on your headphones and you put it in your car and you listen to it. And it sounds like crap. And I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking like, Oh, I'm no good. I he was like walking me through the exact like feelings I was having. I was like, Oh, okay. He's like, the good news is, is it's not like your music. It's, the only problem is that your, your mix sucks and you don't know what you're doing. It's fine. You know what I mean? And he was like, you just need to learn like mixing. And so I'm like, okay. And so I found a really cool course. It's just a free YouTube course, but this guy, like, it's amazing. And it's like this heat, like walks you through every single these ones of these steps. And so I've been really diving into that in my spare time. And I've been learning about EQ compression, like all the essential elements of what it takes to like mix a song and like all that stuff that before I was just feeling my way through the dark. I had no idea about any of this stuff. Like I saw the thing with the little squiggly lines and I had no idea like how to, modify that in order to make the song the way it is and how to like make it sound like a tool song, right? What they're doing, you know, versus like what this song over here is doing. And so I'm just like really pumped right now because a lot of that stuff has been demystified for me. And now I'm like, okay. And, and now I'm, I'm getting into it. So I'm very excited about that because I've been playing guitar for like freaking 25 years, but like, and, and you know, first attempt at actually recording anything like just at home. And then, uh, the mixing part, it's like taking it to a whole new level that I never uh, kind of could wrap my mind around before. But now I'm just like, oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm very excited about all that. So, well, I'm, I'm very excited, too, because yeah. uh, you, you have indeed been initiated into uh, <laughs> what I consider to be a very special club. And that is yeah. the people who did not give up after listening to their shitty mix the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. exactly. I went through that. Yeah. I went through that. Yeah. God, 20, 20, almost 25 years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, well, it's, it's a process. You have to, to go through yep. that. You have yep. to get to the other side. And then once you do, mm -hmm. you start really making some magic. I know. And it's amazing. And God, you know, it just blows my mind. Like, I'm just honestly, dude, I'm just using GarageBand, like not even anything fancy. But I mean, you know, you throw some plugins in there and, it, you know, it's halfway mm -hmm. decent. And like this whole project, this whole process, like oh, even a funnier story than that. Like, I was like, oh, I, this is like maybe a year and a half ago before I started working on all this. And I'm like, eh, maybe about a year ago. And I'm like, oh, I'd love to like record some music, but all that Pro Tools like all that stuff is so expensive. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and, and so I was like, I like, like Googled, like, I'd heard of garage band. I'm like, all right, how much is garage band? Is it like 500 bucks? Something like that. Like, I don't know, dude, like maybe I'll just, and I had no idea. And, uh, and it, I just, I couldn't get a price anywhere. I looked, I'm like, just tell me how much it is assholes. Like I couldn't get a price anywhere. And then, and then I come to find out, I'm like, Oh, it's free. Yeah. Holy crap. I had no idea it was free. And so that, then all the barriers were, and I started tinkering around with it about a year ago. And, uh, I'm like, okay, cool. So it's just like the barrier to entry to all this stuff that we get to do these days. Like, I think, you know, I, I'm just very grateful for that. You know, before, like when you first started 20, 25 years ago, like oh man, rudimentary tools, you probably still had to like book studio time to do a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? But it's like, here we are in this age where it's like, literally I have a free app that, you know, 30 years ago, it'd be impossible. You'd have to like spend a fortune to get like what you can do for free in a few hours here. It's just yeah. mind blowing. Well, so I, it, it, I did spend a, f a small fortune yeah. 25 years yeah. ago to be able to do that. But I had, yeah. I had set up like my own home recording studio, nice. right? Cause I didn't, I didn't want to give any control to anybody else. Uh, and that yeah. obvious, that should be obvious to most folks listening right now. Cause yeah. uh, that's exactly how Liberty radio operates. Um, but yeah, I had to spend money to get the equipment, learn how to hook it all up, learn to use it. And then once I got to the end of that part, then I could start actually like recording, you know, yeah. and editing and mixing and doing all that stuff. Uh, and, and it was a much longer process at that time, because again, it was all acquiring things piecemeal, you know, even having a digital audio workstation 
25 years ago, you know, uh, which was a standalone piece of equipment at that time. It wasn't software that you could just go out and buy. Uh, sure. Like that was not even easy to come by, you know, so yeah. you had to be resourceful in order to try to create the final product that you had in your mind. Whereas you're right today with the way technology has advanced, it's literally all right there at your fingertips right now, but you still have to learn all of the basic stuff, right? You have to have that technical foundation in order to, to make any of the technology work. Yeah. And I will say that before I even like began the whole process of like, like, I, I'm at a point now where I'm ready to like mix all these songs and then master, you know what I mean? Like I'm at that point right now. And then it's like, even as I was going along, just kind of just like get a sense of things. Like I, I saw all these, like I just, in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, I'll just use as horrible as this sounds. I was like, I'll just use AI mixing on this first album because I don't have the resources to hire an engineer to do it. I'll just do AI mastering to be So I, I actually did sign up for this. Like, well, actually it's, it's called, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like free to do the mixing, but then you have to pay to like download the actual song. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I was like tinkering around with this AI mixing, um, platform and, uh, and it still doesn't really sound that good. And, and it's like, I now that I know what really. I know, yeah, it, it it doesn't really do much to it. It doesn't do the type of things that you would that that now that I know this stuff, like the EQ piece and the compression piece, like well, now that I know what those components are, I was, I'm like, oh yeah, there's like no way you could like you have to do it yourself. There's no way that like AI could do this to like get like the attack exactly the way you want it, or to get like the 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 you know, the different, uh, like the low ends to like, bl- you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you, you can't, like, it has to be cause you're the artist, you're creating the song. It has to be the way you want it to be. And there's no way an AI can replicate that the way that you could as the person writing and creating the song and the vision that you have for it and how like the song evolves, like it has to come from within, you know what I mean? There's no way that yeah. that can ever be replaced. Well, I would imagine, so, I would imagine that the final mix that that AI created was yeah. probably the audio equivalent of like uh, AI artwork, which to me yep. always just looks hollow and soulless. Exactly. Like no matter yeah, yeah, how so, elaborate yeah. it is, it's just sterile. Like it has, yeah. it has no, I, I don't even know what the word is. There's, but you yeah. can tell that there is something missing. Dude, it's so weird because, uh, you know, they have the uncanny valley, right? That applies to like, when you're looking at images of humans, like we're programmed into such a way that like, even if like a, an image of like a human type form is off just a little bit, our senses can detect it, right? You know, and, and, and it creates that weird kind of disorienting feeling, but it's the same thing like with AI generated art, like our, our, it's so fascinating how our minds can pick up on that. And it's even hard to, to precisely put your finger on what aspect or what characteristic of the image or writing too. I can tell pretty like you can tell if something's like AI generated when it comes to like writing, you know what I mean? It's particularly chat GBT, like chat GBT has, has writes in such a way that it really stands out from like normal, like organic human writing, you right. know? And so it's like, it, it's just so weird. Like it's hard to put your finger on exactly why, but it's like, you can almost intuitively tell. And that's just like programmed within us. It's very interesting. And so, but yeah, with the, the AI mixing thing, like what it wants you to do is, uh, well, you have the option to do this. Like it says upload a song that you like, that kind of is the sound that you're going for. And it'll kind of like mimic that. So like you can put like a, like for one of the songs I like, I uploaded like a rage against the machine song to like, like, I really want that like hard, like hitting shit. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, eh, I just didn't quite get there. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. So, uh, and again, with everything, you know, like, like we have to, you know, see, this is a great example, man. Like I talking about like the idea of just like freedom in general, you know what I mean? Like, like when we're talking about, um, what is true freedom? Like, this is a great example of it. Like a lot of people would say having an AI mixing type of, uh, type of system in place is, is freedom. Like, Oh, it gives me the free freedom to like, you know, do all this stuff. But it's like, what it does is like, it's actually enslaving you. You're enslaved to that. Yeah. Like if, if I'm relying on that and thinking that that's freedom when it's actually just convenience, then I've completely outsourced my own individual like ability to uh, have control over my actual music. Right. And so, but th- the flip side of that is that by me learning how to mix and learning how to create these songs, um, 
it's it's the more challenging road. It takes a lot more effort, a lot more work, a lot a lot more has to go into it in order to achieve it. But to and 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 then once you get there, once you learn it, like that's true freedom. You know what I mean? And so I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. I, I mean, I just see that a lot. Like I've been talking about that on the show a lot, where it's like like going to the grocery store. Like a lot of people think that the grocery store having access to infinite amounts of food right there, like that, that's freedom, but that's slavery, dude. Like if you're dependent yeah. on the grocery store, like you are enslaved to that grocery store. Like I'm, and I'm not saying like, I, I'm completely enslaved to the grocery store. I haven't, I just moved to a new house. I don't have a garden. I don't have anything, dude. Like I don't have anything going right now. And so, uh, but it's like, so I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to say that I'm not in, in that position, but, I, but to me, it's like, you know, true freedom in that regard would be to like, you know, put effort into building my own like food supply chains. And I do have a lot of community here and I have a lot of like friends I go help out on their farms and stuff. And so it's like, I'm not like kind of just like at square one with all that, but um, you know what I mean? Like, like the true freedom comes from like the really, really hard work that you have to put into something. And I don't think a lot of people want it. I don't think people want freedom because if they knew what it took and how much of their convenience they'd have to sacrifice in order to achieve true freedom, then they'd probably just opt to go back to sleep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when it comes to mixing, I'm all about, I'm, I, I want pure freedom in my mixes, baby. <laughs> well, and I, I admire that because yeah. that to me, that is the way all artists should approach, approach their work. Right. Yeah. Is, is yeah. for the, the maximum amount of agency to go yep. into the final product. The problem with a lot of people today, uh, and I'm, I'm going to speak specifically about Americans here, is sure. they don't know what freedom actually looks like. What they have been sold as what freedom is supposed to be is not freedom at all. It's convenience, yeah. just like you said. So like when you're, when you're trying to have these conversations with people, you know, I, I really think we need to go back to at the very beginning, whenever we meet somebody new and start a brand new conversation, you have to go back to doing the difficult stuff first, like defining your terms, because otherwise you can have an hour long conversation with somebody and never understand that that word that you keep using over and over again means something completely different to that person than what it means to you. And that is all, again, a product of outsourcing our agency to something or someone else because we're, we, we want the convenience instead of, you know, the, the actual end product from doing the real work. Yep, actually, yeah, like the grammar aspect, right? Yeah. Where like, we have to define our terms and be on the same page with all that. It's funny, I'm actually uh, finally going through Tony Myers' little trivium course right now. And I'm Good. just like, so I'm, yeah, I'm unpacking some of that stuff. I took his logic course and that was a huge eye opener a couple of years ago, but uh, I'm doing his trivium course right now. And I'm like, okay, okay. I'm taking a break from like a lot of my doom and gloom podcasts that yell at me. I don't actually, I don't listen to doom and gloom podcasts. I just happen to listen to a lot of podcasters that yell at me all day long. And I, that helps oh, yeah. me when I'm working you know, I, I, I still listen to my Alex Jones. I do to get just to get like the updates on what's going on, because usually they they got their finger on the pulse of what's going on. And then uh, like I got Owen Benjamin yelling at me after that. Right. So it's like I got all of these people that like to yell at me for some reason. But I'm taking like, you know, a little step back and trying to educate myself a little bit. I'm like, OK, I need to do something like to learn. I, I feel like learning right now <laughs> rather than getting yelled at. <laughs> oh, I hear you. So, and yeah. I wish I wish more people had that attitude where uh, yeah. they felt that they needed to spend the majority of their time learning. Cause again, if that were the case, I think we would probably be inhabiting a much different shared reality oh at this point. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, that's like one of the takeaways I've gotten so far out of Tony's course. Like the first uh, section of it is kind of geared. It almost like I, I get the impression that like he didn't even really mean to make a whole course. Like he was doing like some, uh, some uh, presentation, I think for the autonomy community about like um, about just like uh, how to apply the, how to apply the trivia method in like a homeschooling environment. Right. And, and then I see it's kind of, to me, it just seemed like, and knowing how like autonomy and that sort of thing kind of works, it's like there was a demand for more. And so more came out and then that got packaged into a course. Like that's kind of the impression I got. It could be wrong, but, but uh, it was an interesting place to start that, that course was with the, with this, this uh, kind of just conversation around, how to apply the trivia method, trivia method in homeschooling environments and how it really is all about 
teaching you how to learn, like how to process your reality in order to make uh, uh, judgments and, and evaluations of your reality based on like the facts of, of what's, what's surrounding you. You know what I mean? And so it's like, it's a, uh, and then just be focused on learning the value of learning. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that is something that we definitely have lost. I mean, so many people probably just fully still believe that education is like memorization and that learning has this reflexive, like horrible feeling of like, Oh yeah, I had to survive 12 years of that. I had right. to like literally endure 12 years of learning. I am done learning. I am never going to learn another thing for the rest of my life. I have spent every ounce of energy I want to spend learning because they make it such a grueling, horrific process that has no utility whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's yeah. that's one of the ways that they help keep help keep people imprisoned, right? Yeah. Because they oh, yeah. they essentially they back them into a corner psychologically mm -hmm. uh, through the indoctrination process. And once you get to the end result, and you have the product of the interchangeable human, nine times out of ten, they're going to remain that way the rest of mm -hmm. their life because of that experience. It's it's. Apparently only the rather exceptional or the ones that the in indoctrination didn't take on mm -hmm. that are going to stray uh, from that model. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I don't know why I was selected as one of the ones to kind of uh, break free. I mean, we all had to, but I mean, for me, it was kind of like, I didn't even start waking up to this stuff until like 2010, maybe, you know what I mean? I graduated high school in 2002 and uh, like, I think it was the movie Zeit. It was the movie Zeitgeist. I don't know when that came out. 2010, 11, something like that. And and I think I even watched it. It might have been like 2012 or something. Like a couple of years after I started. Uh, God, I don't even really remember, dude. Like maybe it was. Yeah, like it was probably around 2012, something like that. But anyway, yeah, just it was literally like Tower Seven. Like like talking about like the third tower that fell that day. I was like, what? Third tower the hell are you talking about <laughs> the rest is history yeah. <laughs> and then it's like oh and then of course all these roads lead to the education i got a question for you. have you ever seen the movie i think it's a 2013 movie it's called the conspiracy that's it it's just called the conspiracy mm, um, it's about it's like it's a mockumentary and so it's like filmed as if it's a documentary about a couple guys who are making a documentary about this crazy conspiracy theorist guy in new york city and this the, the conspiracy theorist guy's name is Terrence, and he always goes down to this giant like Wall Street building with his sandwich board and his megaphone, and he's always like talking about the New World Order and yelling at the bullhorning the buildings and stuff. And so these these two like documentary filmmakers in the movie are making a movie about him, and so the documentary the the movie is about them making the movie about him, basically. You know what gotcha. I mean? And 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 they're kind of like in the beginning, they're kind of like poking fun at him and they think he's like this silly ridiculous guy right but then as the story unfold like you if you haven't seen it dude it is one of my favorite movies it is so well done whoever wrote it like knew their shit when it came to like a lot of this conspiracy stuff and and it is riveting really? <laughs> and it's like yes dude the the final scene like that like it all builds up to this amazing like i don't want to give anything away but it's like they uh they start to look at some of the stuff Terrence is saying. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> and it's like, these roads lead you down the path of like, you know, and, and I'll just say this one, this one scene. This one scene is where like halfway through the movie, like one of the guys is like really starting to wake up a little bit. And he's like online researching like homestead, homesteading communities. And I just thought that was so funny because it's like, when, that's, that's the inevitable end of anybody's truth journey like you're like oh fuck i gotta get off grid like it's so yeah. funny <laughs> it's like, yeah. apparently yeah. we all end up yeah. at that place exactly exactly i don't know how so, that works yeah. but yeah yeah but dude the conspiracy just look it up the conspiracy 2013 so good i'll have to take a look for that because it sounds yeah, like yeah. something i would actually enjoy watching you would totally is, love it man that's not something i can say about the majority no. of media no. produced by hollywood these days not at all not at all no they nailed it i don't know I don't know. They must have had like some like real conspiracy guys writing it because they they freaking nailed it. <laughs> it's so good. So, I mean, anyway. I would I would love to try my hand at uh, filmmaking one day, like actually Holy. making a movie. You know, soup to nuts, yep. beginning to end, the entire thing. I think yep. that would be a lot of fun. But 
I also know it'd be incredibly expensive. And uh, in order for Maybe. that to happen, we need uh, more folks to contribute over at manufacturingreality.org uh, forward slash provide hyphen value. Um, yeah, go throw some money in the pot, you guys. Come on now. Now, I will say this too. I'm even starting to see the barrier to entry of like filmmaking starting to go away as well. Like, um, you know, literally like our cell phones, like we have like a power, powerful tools and, you know, you can probably differentiate between a cell phone camera and like a really high end, like, like produced Hollywood produced thing. But I even think that the barriers of that are coming down too. like, uh, even like Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom allows you to apply some filters that look like legit cinematic. Like you can take like cell phone footage camera and make it look literally like cinematic. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Wow. So like, I have that make it look like 35 millimeter film. Well, no, I mean, like literally, like like um, well, that not like thirty five. I don't know what like no, like modern day, like cinematic quality, like yeah. like the Dark Knight. You can make it look like the Dark oh, Knight, like literally, shit. like like ha like hardcore, like make it look really, really, really good with some of the Adobe filters. I messed a lot around with a lot of it with uh, like still photography, but but you can really like. I think we're at the point now, we're getting there, where it's like, you know. And, and I, that's, I have that itch too to like make a movie. Like I've got a couple ideas I think would be fantastic. You know what I mean? And even like shorts, I want to start getting into shorts. I got literally a list of like 50 ideas for shorts. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just kind of like, I need to, need to get my shit together. So I got so many projects tossing right. around in my head. I can't even like just well, focus on here's one. Here's what we need to I do, Scott. We yeah, need to yeah. start a production company side project away yes. from the other production companies so that we can just focus on that one thing. Dude, I'm so down, man. Cause like I got ideas up the wazoo, man. <laughs> I'm ready. Seriously, folks, all you need to do yeah. is start throwing money at us and, and we yes. will start producing uh, quality content so that you don't have to uh, go to Lionsgate and uh, yeah. all the other pedophile infested networks out there. Exactly. 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 Yeah, we're done with all that. You know, and it's like and there's such a huge demand for, um, you know, actual good, legitimate outside of the beast yeah. type content that it's like it's you know, and think about would be foolish not to think about to all the people who have only ever been locked into the mainstream ecosystem which is yeah. dying by the way uh it, it, it is going away one way or another i don't know if if folks actually realize that but the old model is going away and we're actually at a transition point now uh, where we can have Maybe not as much as input as we would like to have, but we can still have input into what that is going to look like going forward. And that mm -hmm. is what independent media is all about right now. That is why it is important if you have the capability to be able to produce your own media like I do, like Scott does, you should be doing that. Sure. Absolutely. There is no reason why you shouldn't be doing that right now. Oh man, and I will back you up 100% by saying like, you know, when I, I first started podcasting, like the very first time we ever started podcasting was, uh, it was right after COVID. It was like May of 2020. And like, that's when like myself and my two friends out in Oregon decided to pick up, buy some microphones at Guitar Center and, and we had no idea what we were doing. Like we just started a YouTube channel, you know what I mean? And then I'm like, oh, I might as well put this out on like you know, audio podcast form too, you know, I literally had no idea what I was doing, but back then, you know, my buddy and I, we, you know, we've been listening to Sam Tripoli and freaking uh, Greg Carlwood, like all these guys for years, you know what I mean? And so like, I was big and like listening to podcasts, I was a big podcast listener back then. And, uh, and we, we were debating, well, first the idea was to make shirts. Cause when COVID happened, we were like, we were like, we need to get to, like, why doesn't anybody else see it? We got to do something. Like let's, the first idea was let's, let's make shirts. And he came up with the idea of COVID-1984. He had, he was like, that's such a genius idea. I'm like, dude, that is genius. So, you know, we invented, no, I'm just, everybody invented it at the same time, right? Yeah. COVID-1984. But like, that was the original idea. I was like, dude, COVID-1984, we can make COVID-1984 t-shirts. And then we're just like, why don't we just start a podcast? And, and I remember very, very vividly the thought in my head, all the self-defeating thoughts were like, ah, 
there's already so many podcasts out there. Like who's going to listen to us? You know what I mean? Like who in the world is going to listen to us? And I guarantee there's so many people out there right now that have the urge to like podcast or do some sort of like, you know, print media, whatever, whatever it is, it's on your heart to do. And I guarantee you're having that thought like, ah, there's so many podcasts out there. Like who, who's going to listen to me, man. If I would have caved in and listened to that voice, like every single thing in my life today is a direct result of having made that decision. Like literally, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't make a, I don't make like hardly anything off the podcast itself, but every single thing in my, like, like, like for every, my life has unfolded in such a way that that all the things that I'm involved with that I do make income from have come from that podcast. Like my whole inspiration to start a handyman business came from an interview I had with my buddy Dean out in Portland that had done the same thing just at a drop of a hat it was like put a post, put a poster up at some feed store and said, Hey, I got a truck and some tools. Anybody needs help, let me know. And boom, he had a full blown handyman business. I did the first thing I did when I moved to Nashville, same thing. Just put out a post on Facebook, got a truck and some tools. Anybody needs, you know. The fact that I got involved with Unjected, uh, all the writing stuff that I do, like all of this stuff is a direct result of having been involved in the podcast world, like every single aspect of it. My whole decision to move to Nashville, you know, everything was stemmed from that. So it's like it may you may not become rich. You're doing the podcast not itself. Rich. You're, you're, let's, you're let's not going to be become, honest. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to become rich doing the podcast, but then man, I'll tell you what, dude, the connections I've made, the people I've met, like all of these people that are in my life, you know, a lot of them I've met in real life. I've, we, we've had dinner together. I've had the privilege of meeting you and hanging out in real life. You know, a lot of these folks that I've, I've met in real life that I met through podcasting are like some of my really good friends now. You know what I mean? Like that is the gift and the miracle of all of this. And so don't necessarily think about, you know, are, are people going to listen to me? Are people going to respond to me? That doesn't matter because like you just put yourself out there and, and the rest is not even up to you. You know what I mean? You just, just show up and, and the universe will show up for you. And it's just like so fascinating, like this life I had to get to have today, which is all the direct result of deciding to like, you know, just press that record button that very first time because we had no idea what we were doing and we just did it. And it's just so insane to think that like m how different my life would be had I not done that, right? Had I just like... I was working an office job out in Oregon. You know what I mean? I'm just like, dude, like I would just still be working in that damn office, man. Like miserable. <laughs> maybe. So maybe. I maybe. mean, maybe, maybe you wouldn't even be here anymore. You know? I know. And yeah. I, know I probably people don't like to time. think yeah. about stuff like that. No, you're dead right. But you never like, know. Like you're, you, the yeah. choices that you make about where mm. you direct your attention and your energy have everything to do with how your life unfolds. Yep. And anybody that tells you any different is probably trying to manipulate you. Yep. Because exactly. at the end of the day, it's, it's all about uh, how you reconcile the choices that you make in your life yep. and what you do with the time that you're given. Amen, man. That's what, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, for one, am uh, extremely glad that you made the choices that you did, Scott, because I know we, we've we all been given uh, uh, a hand to play that really is just a losing hand, right? Because that was the system that we were born into. Uh, but some of us still figure out how to work the game a little bit, regardless of the fact that, that everything is pretty much against us as far as the odds are concerned. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, hats off to you, man, not, not only for making those choices, but then building on them over time and getting yourself to the position that you're at right now, because I don't know if you remember, but two years ago, when we got together to do this the first yep. time, uh, yep. I referred to you as one of the rising stars of independent media at that <laughs> time. That, that was not a joke. That was not hyperbole. That was the trajectory that I recognized that you were on if you made, you know, the right choices along the way. And it seems like you have, and it still looks like, dude, your, your future is unlimited. Like the world dude, is thanks, literally man. your oyster. Whatever you want to do, you're going to be able to do it, man. 
Dude, I, well, I got to tell you this too. That you, well, thank you, man. First of all, that that means a lot. And you too, man. Like like seeing what you built here with the Liberty Radio, like you you just nailed it. Like with everything that you're doing, man. So just 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 keep it up. Just keep it, keep it, keep it up. I know, I know the podcast life is gr- is a is a grind. And uh, I actually went through like you, dude. You you're. I don't know how you do it. Like as many episodes as you crank out, dude. Like I I'm tried crazy. to do like, th- yeah, I tried to do like three episodes a week. And I was like, nah. when I first started rebunked, I'm like, no, 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 no. And then I did like three a week and I'm like, I can't even do that. But right now it's like not even feasible with all the other stuff I have going on. So I try to keep like maybe one, maybe two episodes of rebunked a week. And then we have the injected show each week, but it's like, that's an, I can't do more than that. Like literally right now I can't do more than that. And, uh, but I do have another fun thing going on, and and I guess this is kind of public. It's not quite 100% available yet, but I'd love to show you one of these days. But uh, we, we've invented a new podcast tool. Um, oh, wow. I, I was talking about I was talking about it with um, uh, it was on the Union of the Unwanted a couple of weeks ago with Adam Curry, right? Big Adam oh, Curry, nice. the Podfather. Yeah. yeah, he was on there, and and it was actually something that uh was inspired from their community so they've got the no agenda the big no agenda community and they're always they're all about the time talent and treasure right and uh they have the uh so if like the tre- the 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 talent part like if you feel like you can contribute something to the community that's value of value please do it like we invite you to do it you know so there's this guy named Sir Denonymous uh who created this um podcast tool called bingit.io so if you right now you guys go to bingit.io what it is is it's like an internal search engine for the no agenda show so you can type in any word any phrase and you can search back through all 16 years of their show to find out any time they've ever mentioned that word in the show you can click on it it'll take you right to that point in the episode and you can listen to it and it's like, bam. Okay, cool. That's fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a brilliant tool. That's 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 so that's the tool that he developed for Bing It Dot for uh, No Agenda. But as you know, No Agenda is audio only, right? Right. So um, I was like, I reached out to Dean, and I was like, Hey, man, like, what would be the odds of you being able to develop this for like video podcasts? Right. The idea of like you can create like a search engine for a show, and you could type in any word or phrase, and it'll take you right to that spot in like the Rumble video, and you can watch it from there, type of thing. Right. Like, you know, if you ever have been listening, like if you like one of your favorite shows, you're like, fuck, what was that episode? They were talking about that one thing, like, and you can't remember which episode it was or where in the episode it was. Dude, OBDM now, you, Pod needs yeah. that, like, yeah. Like nobody's yeah. business. Okay. Well, the the good news is we've figured it out. So I've been working with him for like the last six months or so, and we've got it, dude. We've got the actual running version of this thing where you can uh, create basically a search engine for a website and uh, and 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 or for a show, like for any show. And then we can uh, you type it in. It takes you right to the spot. It, it plays from there. Right now, we're just pr- putting the final touches on the next part, which is going to be clip exporting. So you can export like an Instagram reel from that clip with like customizable captioning, like all the kids like to do and all that stuff, oh, wow. dude. So it's like, yeah. So it's like, so now as a producer, you could be like, as a producer of your own show, you just type in the word that you want to make a clip of. Boom, it'll take you right to that spot. And then boom, you can export a clip ready to go. And uh, so like it's so, so, you're, so we're almost you're telling me that at some point in the future, I'm going to be able to go back to the episode of open lines that we did on Friday night. And I'm just going to yeah. type in fucking jug handles and it's going to yeah. go right Take to right that there. clip of you right there instantaneously. Yep. That's and you play it and play it and export a clip of it. So. Um, so yeah, we've got that. We've got it, dude. And so it's coming very soon and we're going to, it's basically a product we're going to try to bring to market. And it's a very, you know, it's like a subscription type thing for, for content creators to offer their audience or to use as a producer and all that stuff. And, but, uh, yeah, something I'm super excited about, dude. So awesome. stay, stay, stay tuned for that. folks. Well, remember that you heard it here first on your Liberty you radio, ladies there and gentlemen. Go. Well, Scott, I know you have other things going on as well, so I'm about ready to uh, return you to your regularly (laughs) scheduled life for whatever festivities that you have planned the rest of the day. But before I do that, uh, let everybody know where they can connect with your work, not just on Unjected. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, so Rebunk News is the show. Uh, you can find links to all my stuff, including all the injected stuff, social media, everything at libertylinks.io forward slash rebunked or just rebunk.news is the landing page for the, the rebunk show. And you can find all the links to everything there. So, dude, thank you so much for having me, man. That was a really good chat. 
and good to catch up, dude. Absolutely, man. Thank we'll, you. We'll have to do it again and and not For wait sure. two years the next I time. I know. But, I know. 100%. But you're a busy man. You know, you're a busy man. Yeah, it's it's yeah, hard yeah, to, to carve yeah. out time sometimes when uh, when you find yourself in that situation. Totally. Totally. Thanks, brother. Keep Absolutely, up the amazing work. Man. Thank you. Thanks for uh, allowing us uh, a little bit of your time today. Yeah, my pleasure, dude. Thank you. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that has been your unjected Liberty Radio interview with uh, both Scott and Shelby. And uh, that, was, that was well worth the price of admission, uh, I think. But then again, I think, I think all of the interviews are well worth the price of admission. Don't forget, we will be here on Thursday night uh, for uh, the Get Fact Harder with myself and the Hi Yona. And the next time that you will see Liberty Radio after that is Saturday when Wheezy joins us here in the studio. Other than that, we are off the rest of the week. So uh, I guess you guys are going to have to figure out uh, what you're going to do with the rest of your day. You know, you might in a couple hours, uh, you might want to stop by the new Prisoners channel over on Rumble, I'm going to be hanging out with six and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. So it should be a good time. But until we meet again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And of course, smoke more of the weeds. And uh, we'll see you next time.